Um, well, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm Richard Williams. I'm the Chief Executive of, of Northern Ireland Screen. Um, and my purpose today is simply really to, to welcome the whole uh, UK Film Council team. Um, I think it is very encouraging and useful that the UK Film Council has chosen to try and um, frame and cast a light on the cultural impact of film. One of the things that really struck me coming out of this study is how incredibly important uh, films about national, regional and community identity have been in the history of UK cinema. In a sense, one knows that, but uh, when you see it all set out in a, in a document, it comes across incredibly clearly. And I guess this is one part of the UK which uh, has had more experience than most and probably more experience than it cares about the power of film to portray accurate and hopelessly inaccurate images of the way communities work. So I think that is a really important strand that comes out of the study. Rather than simply setting out to um, describe uh, British films uh, or to categorise British films, could we say something about the impact that those films um, had had on British society and on the changes that occurred in British society uh, UK society over the uh, over the last 50 years. So what were we looking for when we commissioned the work? We were looking for a summation of what was um, already known about cultural impact from a wide variety of sources. So we wanted the groundwork done. Um, secondly, we were looking for new thinking in the description of cultural impact and the measurement of cultural impact. Um, and thirdly, we wanted a report that would be accessible and interesting to policymakers. Once we knew what we had, in a way, it became easier to relate this to the impact uh, issues that we were looking to, uh, to explore. And really, it was a case of looking at how the cinema, UK cinema, <clears throat> managed to infect, inflect, contaminate, influence the national narrative, or rather, I should say, the national narratives, plural, as we'll see later. So from that initial uh, database, which gathered about 5,000 titles. We then culled two samples, one, what we, one we call intuitive sample, which is the best of British, uh, the movies that are regarded by the reviewers' culture and the professional ob observers' culture as being the, the, the British films of note. And then because we were aware that uh, this would be able uh, in and of itself to reflect the totality and diversity and rich ecology of British cinema, we also selected a random sample which was selected without any attention or care to selective, qualitative, uh, subjective criteria. What we were trying to do, as you'll have guessed by now, is really capture the totality, totality of the UK, <coughs> that's the, 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 re, the, the um, remit of the UK Film Council, and also we were trying to cover a very long time span, uh, from the end of the war up until 2006. In our study, which Bertrand has outlined, we were looking for measures. We were looking for measures that would give us a handle on how films could be said to have impact, and particularly how they could be said to have impact in the digital world, and in the world in which films are able to be seen and re-seen through video, uh, and in the role that the conversational aspects of websites, such as IMDB and others, bring into play. The fact that one can read about a film one can have a recommendation on a website, one can then buy the film online, or rent it, see it for oneself, contribute a comment. Films have acquired, if you like, a, a wholly extended uh, life cycle. And we found that in, there's a lot of information online. We made some use of this. The website IMDB, which many of you will know, contains an awful lot of information, more than many people ever bother to look at or make use of. And if you just simply record, for instance, the kind of votes that films get. You've got a, some samples there. Um, and the scores that they get from the ratings that users of the site give them, that begins to tell you something. It's not conclusive. It's not the whole story by any means. But you begin to get some understanding of the films that potentially have had more impact than others. The pathways to cultural impact for British film now leads through uh, a multiplication of media outlets. Uh, very few of us will see films only in one mode. We will tend to see them in two, three, four, 
uh, different forms, and, and that becomes a, a reality that we have to think about. And, uh, and research, it's important to know something about how people value those different experiences, the film that they can get through the post uh, as a DVD to watch at home, the film that they'll go out to see in a cinema like this, or in a multiplex, or they have a choice of types of cinema too. And I, I think an important point to come out of the document as a whole is to use a much wider form of distribution of ideas. <laughs> and I think that one of the follow-ons from this is that we can, in addition to the intuitive, the random, the various metrics and so on, we can look at the different ripple effects and the sort of Venn diagram where these things actually uh, meet together. Uh, I would like to thank everybody involved with this. I found it a most stimulating document. I got three copies sent to me. <laughs> I've, I've read them very carefully. I've given one to the University of Ulster Library in York Street because I feel it is something that needs to be there for people to, uh, to read. I hope you do read all of it and I hope that in Brian Henry Martin's chairing of the Q&A afterwards that you really, in the last 30 minutes that are available or so, pick up on issues that have been raised and for the benefit of Bertrand, Ian and other, perhaps ones that have not been raised. Thank you.